What's up, guys? Uh, I want to do a video on this pamphlet I got. This is the first political mail I've gotten in the mail in a long time that I actually read and enjoyed, and that's why I'm sharing it with you. And it was sent to me by Mike Pfeiffer, 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 whatever. I don't like politicians, and a lot of times I don't even know their names. This is one of those times. I recognize them, and I recognize the name, but I don't know how to say it. Uh, let's go with Pfeiffer. Mike Pfeiffer. That sounds good. So anyway, Mike Pfeiffer um, sent me this pamphlet, Knowing Your Rights, The Castle Doctrine, Act 10 of 2011. Um, interesting, just breaks down what the Castle Doctrine is, and I thought it'd be a great video opportunity to share this with you guys. Um, this relates to Pennsylvania, however, I believe the definition of Castle Doctrine through Pennsylvania is universal throughout all the states that do have the Castle Doctrine enforced. Now, one thing I will note is that um, because I happen to distribute the mail as well, um, not everyone got these, okay? I am a gun person. I have, have a, a gun history through the mail, such as NRA literature, um, lots of random different gun catalogs, stuff like that. So the government really does know who, who are gun people and who aren't, okay? Not to be uh, paranoid or anything, but the people who aren't into guns specifically did not get this. My assumption is that um, these politicians got a master list of people in the areas through, say, the NRA. All right, if you're an NRA member, sure, you like your guns, you probably own them. Guess what? You should know what the laws are. Um, either way, I think it was very fascinating that I got this in the mail, and I'm glad I did. So I want to just, I'm going to literally read this to you, okay? I know that might sound boring if you're not into story time or gun rights in Pennsylvania or gun rights across the United States, then you might want to just switch over to the other thousands of hours of entertainment here on YouTube. Um, but if you are interested, listen up and listen carefully because this does break down what the Castle Doctrine means, what is considered self-defense, what is not, um, some stipulations. One off the top of my head uh, from reading this before was that uh, if you're obviously conducting illegal activities such as drug sales, um, it, it doesn't, you don't qualify <laughs> for protection. Okay, so if someone say, I don't know, breaks into your home, this isn't specifically related to this, but let's say someone breaks into your home uh, to steal drugs from you and you're a drug dealer and you shoot them, no one's going to protect you. You're performing an illegal act and therefore you're, um, you know, you're not covered by some of these gun laws, okay? So anyway, I just want to read this to you, so it's a clarification to anyone who doesn't really understand what the Castle Doctrine is, or if you happen to live in Pennsylvania and own a gun, it's good enough if you didn't get this or didn't, don't know anything about it. So here it is. Here's the literature, like I said, word for word. Okay, I'm not going to mess anything up or ad lib here. This is word for word. The Castle Doctrine assumes that an attacker or intruder, these are air quotes, <laughs> I'm just reading because they're quoted, let me start over. The Castle Doctrine assumes that an attacker or intruder intends great bodily harm if he or she either, one, unlawfully or forcefully enters a dwelling, residence, or occupied vehicle, or two, is attempting to unlawfully and forcefully remove someone from a dwelling, residence, or occupied vehicle. So, in layman's terms for that, um, if someone is breaking into your home or uh, trying to take you with them, okay, forcefully removing you i.e. kidnapping. All right, continuing. Um, either of these circumstances results in a, an initial presumption that a person uh, who is aware that either one or above, uh, or you know, one or two of the above statements is justified in using deadly force in self-defense against the attacker or intruder, okay? Again, my own explanation of that is if you initially um, think that this person is really breaking into your home, Okay, or this person is truly trying to remove you from your car or home or property. Um, that's where you have the uh, um, the initial thought is that you you truly believe that this person is is causing you harm in this case. Okay, and you use deadly force to defend yourself. Note, this rule does not apply in any of the following. Okay. If the attacker or intruder is another resident, okay, of the home, so basically if a family member tries to break into the house, you can't shoot them, uh, or if they're trying to kick you out of the house, you can't shoot them, or has the right to be in the dwelling, residence, or occupied vehicle. So again, let's say you get into a fight with, uh, I don't know, your uncle, and he's uh, trying to pull you out of the car. If you shoot him, 
you don't qualify for this, okay? Uh, he has, let's say, well, if he owns the car, that's really the point of what that analogy was. Um, if your uncle owns the car and he has a right to be in it, you can't defend yourself from him. You're in his property. Um, also does not apply if the attacker or intruder is a parent or grandparent or guardian removing a child from the dwelling residence or occupied vehicle. So again, you don't like mom and dad, and they, you know, they're taking you out, you're, you're underage, you can't shoot them. Shouldn't have a gun anyway, but, uh, not cool. Don't show your parents. That's not very nice at all. Also, it does not apply if the attacker or intruder is actually a law enforcement officer engaged, engaged in the performance of his or her duties. Okay. So again, if you're doing something wrong and the police officer is removing you or broke into your home, you can't shoot them. Now this is, this is a very interesting gray area, in my opinion, because let's say there's a lot of situations where uh, you have a, a domestic dispute, you know, people are yelling, arguing, neighbors call the cops, whatever, it gets noisy, maybe there's a party or something. A police officer knocks on the door, there's no answer, maybe you can't hear them, maybe you're fighting so hard you can't hear them, right? Breaks down the door, all right? Let's say one of these people in the home shoot that officer because they're not thinking straight. Maybe they're intoxicated. Maybe they're on drugs. Who knows? Um, but all they don't see a uniform or anything. All they see is, okay, person entering my home, broke the door. They shoot the police officer. No, that's not the fence. Does not count. Okay, so just wanted to clarify that. Um, the last uh, um, example of something that does not apply for self-defense is if the attack or intrusion is related to criminal activity in the dwelling, like I mentioned before. Um, for an example, would be the attacker breaks into a home to steal drugs from a drug dealer. Okay, that's what I said before. So interesting facts there. Um, I think all of this is probably uh, common sense, but again, just a little summary or recap of here. Um, if the person has a right to be in the house or dwelling, uh, can't defend yourself from them. Okay, same thing with a car. If they own the car or have a right to be in there, I mean, a legal right to be in there, um, can't defend yourself. If it's a police officer on duty doing their job, can't defend yourself. If you're underage and your parent, guardian, or whatever, family member tries to remove you from a house or something, can't defend yourself. All right, so those are important things to know. Now, this is pertaining more to the Castle Doctrine specific, uh, specifically. Outside a dwelling, residence, or occupied vehicle, the Castle Doctrine legislation, legislation be nice if I can read, eliminates the duty to retreat and a person can stand his ground and use force, including deadly force, in self-defense in all of the following applications. A person has a right to be in the place he or she was attacked. Okay, so let's say you're on your lawn or on your property. You're being attacked. Now you can defend yourself. There used to be this unwritten rule between gun owners in Pennsylvania is, uh, you know, if there's a, a deadly threat out there, you shoot them outside and you drag them inside. <laughs> so, you know, obviously in, in saying that uh, you shot them inside legally. But of course, that's just a wives tale thing. No one actually does that. Um, but this, the, doc, the Castle Doctrine is, like I said, basically saying that now your property extends to your physical property. It's not just they have to be in your home to be a threat. If they're on your lawn and you're being attacked, whatever. Go ahead, defend yourself legally, okay? If that means killing them because that's the necessary force to stop the attack, then so be it. Uh, same applies to your vehicle, which I think is awesome. Um, the person has a reasonable belief that the use of force is immediately necessary to protect against Im imminent death, serious injury, kidnapping, or rape, okay? So if at that moment you're being attacked and you truly believe your life is at stake, now you have a reason to defend yourself lethally if needed, okay? Now, um, immediately necessary to protect against imminent death, okay? That's important. When the cops show up and they ask you questions, you have to be very, very careful of what you say, all right? You truly have to believe that your life is on the line, okay? A lot of things uh, for self-defense in general, not just guns, but even just fist fighting or a knife attack or anything like that, a uh, baseball bat, anything, any kind of physical contact between people in fighting. Um, defense is not always what you think of it, you know? Someone may come up to you for whatever reason, punch you in the back of the head when you're not looking, right? Now, what do you want to do? You want to spin around after you, you know, <laughs> kind of rub it away, because that's what we all do. 
it's not going to help, but we go, ooh, and we, we touch it and rub it, right? Um, but your immediate instinct as an animal, because we are animals, we're sophisticated, but we're just animals, your instinct is defend yourself. You want to spin around and you want to punch them back, right? You want to say, you know, what's going on? And, and just get into a defensive mode. That's natural. That's our natural instinct. By law, if that person is walking away or running away or no longer, a, you know, physically threatening you, um, you can't touch them, even though they hit you first. Now, please, I'm not a lawyer, okay? I'm interpreting this the best way I possibly can, including specific instances that I've seen in real life, okay? I've seen where there's been a fight where someone attacks someone, then they get upset and immediately they can't do anything, right? But now they're steaming. They're really upset and they want revenge. And later, okay, at a later date, when that threat is no longer present, they will retaliate, okay? Uh, a good example is maybe something as simple as a, a schoolyard fight, a couple teenagers, you know? Um, oh, you took my girlfriend, you know, and you beat the crap out of some kid, okay? You walk away. Maybe an hour later or maybe even the next day or something, that kid who got beat up is really upset by this, right? Maybe he attacks you. You can't say you're defending yourself. You, you started that. You instigated that, all right? It's a fine line to, to really claim self-defense. In a lot of situations, you just can't do it. Uh, also, necessary force, a very specific detail that has to be mentioned. Necessary force, what does that mean? It means if someone punches you between the eyes, you can't stab them in the neck, okay? That's not necessary force to defend yourself. Um, of course, there's different circumstances and it is very situational. If you're on the ground and they're pinning you to the ground and they're repeatedly hit you, you know, hitting you over and over and over again, uh, you feel like your life is on the line, then you do whatever's necessary, whether that means to pull a knife, a gun, whatever. Um, but if someone, you know, like I said, they, it's, if they slap you across the face, you can't shoot them. It's just, it's just how it is. That's not necessary force to stop the immediate threat. Um, that is overly excessive force. So again, it seems like common sense, but in, in the, the heat of the moment and in the passion of the fight, um, things get out of hand. And I think a lot of people end up dying over stupid stuff. You know, a, a stupid, silly argument between two guys, two alpha males, they have to have the upper hand. One says, no, you're wrong, blah, blah, blah. Um, verbally, they're not getting anywhere because they're usually two morons, so now it gets physical. Okay, well, I can't explain to you how I feel, so I'm going to cause you pain. Uh, gentleman number one here throws a punch. Oop, that hurt. I don't like it. Throw a punch back. Now you're in a brawl, okay? Now you're really upset. You're punching each other. Maybe guy number one here is uh, winning the fight, so guy number two says, this isn't fair, and pulls his knife out and shanks him in the gut. All right, guy number two falls over. Now he's dead. Um... Is that necessary defense? Really depends. It really depends. Um, the point of me explaining all this and, and talking about this stuff is uh, not only just to get some information about the Castle Doctrine out, which I think is very important, and thank God Pennsylvania finally passed it. And this isn't brand new news, but it's it's still somewhat fresh. Um, but also just to, to let you guys know that uh, you really should know what your rights are because there's a there's a lot of miscommunication out there and a lot of ideas of what you think you can do and really you have no no uh, legal reason to do, okay? You can do whatever you want, but there's consequences. And there's a lot of innocent people in jail uh, because our, our system, our judicial system is not perfect, okay? Court systems are not perfect. Lawyers, certainly not perfect. Um, juries, people like you and me. Do you really trust 12 random people you might find outside your neighborhood? Uh, you know, to, to judge whether you should go to jail or not for the rest of your life? No, I certainly wouldn't want to <laughs> trust my peers. Um, but like I said, there, there's a lot of gray area. Um, really, I just want to kind of get some of the basic points here and just remind everyone to read up on the law, um, specifically if you carry a weapon, just to know what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. Um, I, I hate to know that there's people out there who really are trying to defend themselves, but sometimes take it a little too far, um, maybe by accident or maybe just, like I said, you know, uh, heat of the moment, and uh, they end up suffering for the rest of their life because of it. So just pay attention. Do your best to walk away every time. I know there's a lot of stubborn guys out there. I'm, I'm speaking specifically to guys because we happen to be a little bit more egotistical. Now, women, of course, you know, they get into their cat fights and they have their moments too, and sometimes they really hold their ground and, you know, the hair... Pulling starts, but um, 
for the most part, they're, they're, they're smarter beings and the smarter sex and they walk away. Uh, maybe they may mumble, but it doesn't get physical as often as guys. Guys feel the need to really just kind of butt heads and I'm bigger, I'm badder, I'm cooler, you know, whatever, that, that whole macho crap. Um, it gets to all of us. It gets the best of all of us at some point. But uh, be careful, okay, because you could be a very good person and you could get in a very bad situation and, uh, and suffer become, because of it. So just know what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do. So, um, let's see. Let's read a couple more of these things that the Castle Doctrine does apply for. Ah, okay. The person is not illegally possessing a firearm. That just seemed like a basic thing, okay? But it, it's a detail that should be known. Uh, maybe someone is completely attacking you randomly. Some mugger just pulled you off the street, you're a woman. And um, it, she, he's repeatedly beating you, okay? You're, you're barely hanging on to life. Now he's raping you. Um, it seems like a horrible situation. And what do you do? You, you manage to get grip on your gun and you shoot him and you kill him. Well, you just committed murder illegally. You had no right to self-defense because that is not a legal gun um, in this specific case, okay? So that's a very, very important detail. It might be overlooked. I know for the most part, we're all very legal. We all uh, have a good responsibility when it comes to guns. Uh, the general thug on the street uh, doesn't watch you know, the gun channels on YouTube. They may watch gun videos to say, ooh, that's cool, or ooh, I want that. Um, but they're not following gun channels for the most part. At least that's my assumption. Um, could be wrong on that. However, um, the average person doesn't have to worry about that because they are law-abiding, gun-owning citizens. But just something to note, okay, if you have an illegal gun and you think in your mind, well, you know, if the situation is bad enough or if, it's, if I'm allowed to defend myself, then it's okay, it's not okay. If that gun turns out to be illegal, um, you just threw out your only chance of uh, winning your court case and not going to jail. So just important to know. It doesn't really apply to most of us watching the video, but thought I'd read it off anyway. Um, let's see, the person is not engaged in criminal activity, talked about that before. Uh, the attacker displays or uses a firearm in any other deadly weapon, and the attacker is not a law enforcement officer engaged in the performance of his duties. I'll read that again. The attacker displays or uses a firearm or any other deadly weapon, and the attacker is not a law enforcement officer engaged in the performance of his duties. Okay. So what they're saying is someone flashes a weapon of some kind. Now you have reason to believe that they're trying to take your life. And that's fine as long as it's not a police officer that's trying to arrest you legally. Okay. So um, let's see. I read a little. There's a side blurb here. It says limits on lawsuits for legal use of force. Okay. This is what I was talking about before. Any person who legally uses force in self-defense is entitled to protection against civil lawsuits by his or her attacker or the family of the attacker. This protection allows the person to recover attorney fees, court costs, and compensation for loss of income if the person uses force in compliance with Pennsylvania law, the person is sued by the attacker or family of the attacker for an injury to the attacker as a result of that force, and the person wins the lawsuit. So what they're saying here is by law, um, you're protected against personal uh, lawsuits or being sued after the fact, okay? Um, most of the time, if you shoot and kill someone, it doesn't matter what they're doing, their family's going to try to sue you after the fact. It's talking about civil court. And they're saying, basically, if you win your court case and the state of Pennsylvania finds that you legally defended yourself properly, then you will be protected by the state against personal lawsuits. I think that's great. That's fantastic. Okay. And then, of course, there is a website here to find the full details and all this stuff. This is just a brochure, which is a couple little facts. But here's the website, which is completely blurry. So that was redundant and did not help anyone. <laughs> www.legis.state, S-T-A-T-E, dot P-A, dot U-S. And I'll put that in the description box if you want to read more about this, okay? Just to recap, it's basically saying what most people already knew is that you're extending your home to your property, including your vehicles, okay? So they don't have to physically break into your home anymore to defend yourself lethally. You can do it on your lawn. You can do it down by your personal lake. You can do it on your hill. 
You got a big boulder, you like to sit on in the middle of the night, look at the stars, someone comes up and beats you for no reason, you can do it on your boulder. Anything that you want, okay? I think the car thing is a big and important thing because there's a lot of people who travel. And now, of course, there is conflicting information here because of the fact that now that you're traveling, perhaps interstate, the gun laws still apply, okay? Just because you have the right to defend yourself lethally um, in your vehicle does not mean you legally have a right to have your gun in your vehicle at all times, okay? So make sure that you're aware of all the laws and the different places you might travel. Um, this goes back to the other thing I was saying about the, in the legal possession of a firearm, okay? You may legally own that firearm, but if you're in your car in a state that does not allow or recognize your carry permit or your gun rights and you defend yourself lethally, then it becomes a problem, okay? Now you're illegally using your firearm. So, a lot of details and stuff. Um, I don't mean to be confusing. As I'm making this video, I'm thinking I probably should have just literally read it word for word like I said I would instead of elaborating and giving examples because that might have confused some people. Uh, if you are confused, just click on the link below. Check out the website, read the uh, details on here, but um, just wanted to read this information and share with all you guys. It's important to know your laws, okay? We all like our weapons as hobbies, and many of us like to carry weapons for personal protection. Um, a lot of us don't really know what we're allowed to do as far as that is concerned, so it's important to educate yourself. Education is power. It truly is. So. That's all. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, guys.